Hello again, Phil Thompson here from uh, Church Solutions Podcast. Good to be with you. Steve Lacey, how are you today? Doing good. And Michael Gray, how are you? Doing great, Phil. Thanks. Mike had to turn on his, had to unmute his microphone. Yes, my dogs were not going to interrupt, interrupt this podcast. Yeah, it's interesting in this pandemic time. Uh, although Steve and I started to do this, uh, we, we used to always meet, usually at Steve's place or my place, and we would set up the equipment and record podcasts. But uh, we stopped doing that even before the pandemic, didn't we, Steve? We did. Yeah, so we just we just slipped right into this. All right, so folks, without further ado, we have a guest today with us. Uh, and uh, I, I've known Stephen Haywood through Facebook and through some other interaction. I thought we had him on here before, but we had not. Stephen has been uh, in broadcasting and doing streaming video for around 15 years or so. Uh, he's worked with Telestream, which is Wirecast, and uh, uh, New Tech, TriCasters, and OBS, and vMix, and other software and hardware switchers, as well as live encoders. So he knows his stuff, and he is actually now with PTZ Optics as a broadcast engineer, uh, been involved in that. Uh, he's also on staff uh, because, as, as I know, most of our listeners are involved in ministry in some capacity. He's on staff as an assistant pastor. Uh, also media director and, and children's pastor. So you, you've covered a gamut here quite a bit, uh, Stephen. Thank you for being our guest today. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks, guys, for having me. Appreciate it. Well, it's, it's our pleasure. Thanks for taking some time to be on our little podcast here. So uh, you're working now with PTZ Optics, and I'm going to let Michael and Steve Lacey ask you some questions, but I'm going to just throw the first one out here. What in the heck is a PTZ camera? Oh, you know, that's a question I get uh, often from friends and family that have no idea what I do. And so <laughs> they, they think a camera is a camera, right? A camera is, uh, you know, used to shoot video, take pictures, those types of things. But a PTZ optics camera stands for pan, tilt, and zoom. So basically it gives you the ability to move the camera, zoom it in, pan it, do all the good stuff without needing a camera operator. And I think that is something that guys like myself who produce our own broadcasts uh, need those types of cameras mm -hmm. to be able to, to do the video that we do. So are they really big cameras? Are they, and I'm, I'm playing dumb here. I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of dumb, but not that dumb, but because I have a little experience, <laughs> a little bit of experience with PTZ, but, but for those who don't, I mean, honestly, for those who don't, is this like a big camera? Is this a little camera? Is it something you can hide? I mean, what's the size of it? And, and why should well, I care? <laughs> you, you know, you know, Phil, this is something that um, we could actually demonstrate here for you, uh, for your viewers that uh, get to see yes. uh, the video. So let, yeah. let's do this. OK, so I'm going to cut to a camera here. Ooh, high tech. Yeah. Um, and, and that's the beauty of these pan tilt zoom cameras. So, yeah, yeah, I see that now. You can we kind of yeah. see it off to the side there. Yeah, we have a lot of people listening on podcasts and audio only, but we do have video as well. If, if people want to go to Streaming Church uh, and go under uh, info and see our Church Solutions podcast, that there's video on this as well as audio, and we're on YouTube. So, so I see what you're doing here. Uh, that, that's pretty cool. You're panning, tilting, and zooming. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 a pretty, so, um, it's a pretty easy solution because a lot of people um you can do this within all the software that's out there whether it be wirecast obs the free solution or vmix or even hardware solutions like i use the tricaster yeah i used to pan tilt and zoom when i was in college but that was a different area and i'm not talking <laughs> about hardware here all right go ahead guys shoot some questions at Stephen haywood here so why would a ministry be interested in a ptz is there um, do I need multiple cameras to take advantage of one? Do I just, can I use it with one? What's the, what is the main advantage? And what are we talking, the follow-up question, a PTZ versus a normal camera? What, what am I talking cost differences? All right, so let's break this down a little bit. So why a church would want a uh, PTZ camera? In fact, we just upgraded all of our cameras at the church, two PTZ Optics cameras, actually, before I came on board here uh, with, with the folks over at PTZ Optics. 
And the reason we did it is because of the very thing I spoke about just a few minutes ago is having the ability to do this all yourself. Um, as we came into pandemic times, um, we had a skeleton crew at the church. Uh, myself, my wife, the senior pastor, his wife. Um, we did roundtable. That's how we did the message, if you will. Um, we were limited. We had my kids. And so we had a, a, my understudy, if you will, uh, in the media department. He basically was doing everything by himself. Well, how do you get to switch cameras or move cameras around when you can't have a lot of people there? And how do you do it when people aren't paying attention? So that's when we started to dive into and, and entertain the, the idea of using PTZ cameras like I use in my studio. Because just as you just saw in that demonstration, I was moving the camera without getting up and, and going anywhere. I didn't need a camera operator to do that. Um, one of your other questions was, what about pricing? So you can get in on some of these cameras, depending on what model you have, you're, you're looking at. Um, there are models with NDI, and uh, you can get in $1,500 all the way up to $2,500 and even $3,000, depending on, again, depending on the model, which falls in line essentially with some of the other cameras that are out there on the market that you actually physically need somebody to control. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How has uh, PTC cameras, I remember when they first came out, they were clunky when you tried to control them. Uh, you know, the joystick or whatever. And it seemed like, you know, you would zoom right in and, and it, it would just move fast. And it was like, okay, we're trying to move. It's not moving. It's not moving. And then it moves right away. Lots of yep. uh, bugs, I guess, when it first came out. Has this improved at all? And uh, how has it improved? Well, how about this? How about I let you be the judge? So I'm going to let you in on a little magic that people think that I'm sitting in front of a green screen, which I'm actually not. I'm sitting in front of a TV. Ooh. So let's do this a little bit. Let's zoom out. Okay. And let's let's zoom in. Okay. Let's kind okay. of pan around here. Now I am using a joystick here that's controlling it, but I can also control it via software. But I figure so I can stay looking at the camera, I'm just going to use a okay. joystick. And now I'm going to zoom and pan. Wow. And you can see uh, it, it's it can go in pretty tight. Um, now I have it set to a fast setting, but um, okay. you can. You have this ability yeah. that you can do it and you can also call presets so let's let's call my main preset um just by hitting a button it pulls it right in hmm. and you're able to do it so what do, what do you think uh i i like it uh guys your opinion michael, yeah, michael well, gray what's your thoughts michael gray having <laughs> been the guy back in the room calling shots and <laughs> trying to get a cameraman to do that shot and to wake up <laughs> and to follow the pastor yes. who just walked off the, the camera. I was like, yes, when, when, I, when well, we finally got set up with this, it was such a great answer for the person who's literally watching the screens and switching cameras to be able to control that camera to get the correct shot that they, they would like to have. Uh, it's hard to sync two brains through radio oftentimes versus one volunteer controlling everything. So I, I think uh, I think PTZ uh, cameras are awesome because it gives you the flexibility to be able to do things uh, with one person versus two. So if I have a sanctuary auditorium and it's, I don't know, it would be a really large auditorium, 100 by 100, maybe. Um, yep. Maybe that's not. Uh, and I've got yards in the, yeah. <laughs> not yards. That would be pretty big. Um, 100, 100 and I've got cameras yeah. in far corners and that sort of thing. Is there a limitation or any constraints on where I can put the controls for those cameras? So we have different models of the cameras. You have a you have a 12x, a 20x, and a 30x zoom capability. So I would recommend a 30x if you're going with a with a hundred foot sanctuary. Um, our sanctuary is probably about 65 feet uh, in 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 length, and we're running we're running the uh, the 20x, and so uh, that works really really well as far as getting in there and getting the the proportionate uh, zoom like you're seeing right now with myself. 
Um, in my studio, I'm using a variety. I'm using 12X, 20X, and 30X zoom uh, cameras. Um, but there's something else. There's another camera that I've actually introduced to our church, and it's made by the sister company, by PTZ Optics, but it's, it's called a Huddle Cam, Huddle Cam HD. And why is this something churches should look at? This camera here, as I don't have a camera operator, but if you look, it's I now have a camera around. operator. So, Steven so we have an her. auto tracking camera and it's able to, you know, follow my every movement. And we actually incorporated this into our church um, and another church that's uh, a sister church of ours that is picking this up because it gives you the, the, the beautiful capabilities that you guys mentioned earlier about following the pastor who likes to move as well as our pastor likes to move. I like to move when I'm preaching. So this is something that, as you can see, it's, it's tracking me. It's following my every movement. I've got a lot of motion behind me and it's still managing because you can set up blocking zones and you can set up um, different hotspot areas where I can trigger different things that's coming soon in a firmware. <laughs> so um, as you guys can see, I mean, I'm, I'm moving around, I'm coming up here. I'm gonna sit down on my stool here. I'm gonna cut back to my main camera, just what, what like if, that. What if there's so two people in a shot? What if there's two uh, and, and two people move different directions? How does the camera know which, <laughs> which one do I follow? So, so right now with the, with the camera technology, the way it is, the larger person, person in, in the shot is going to take dominance. So, so the fat taller, guy always gets the preference. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, I don't know if it's so much that, but it's, it's the height of the person <laughs> oh, okay. because that was, um, that was something between, um, a few people that we had up on stage. One was, was larger, um, width wise, uh, but the senior pastor was taller and it still followed him. So, um, it, you know, again, I'm sitting about 12 feet away from that camera. And again, we have that 65 feet at the church. Wow, that's interesting. And so, again, folks, it, if you're listening to this on audio, you, you got to watch the video part of this, uh, of what we oh, do here. So well, but, yeah. and it, we can ahead, explain Steve. what happens as well. Um, but um, I, it looked like as you got up and started to walk around, Stephen, the camera definitely followed yeah. you. It looked like it also did a little bit of zooming or zoom adjustment. Did it? Did I just miss yes. that or was it doing that as well? No, we can do this again. So if I stand right. up, you're going to see. So there's different presets that you can set. You can set pre, You set a wide preset that covers basically um, the whole tracking area. And then you set a preset, which is what I like to do, your, 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 your profile. So if I back up, it's going gonna, it's gonna to adjust to keep me in that profile that I want. And as I get closer to my, my bar, because I can only go so far, it's going to keep me in that head, head shoulders area that I, that I want to be in. Mm -hmm. And it'll zoom it in, in in real motion. So, you know, it's going to keep it, you know, you have some forgiveness. You've got some play. Um, but oh. as you can see, it's, it's panning around and zooming. And, and there is settings inside here. And... Um, there are settings that that allow you to, um, you know, change the tracking speed. So, I think I found the the proper tracking speed that I want to use within my the confines of my studio, but everybody's going to have to play with it within the confines of their own environment. So this is, I'm sure, all the current camera operators at their churches are shuddering in fear <laughs> right now. <laughs> because or happy. they've just been automated out of a job yeah or happy that if they're volunteers i can go do something else now <laughs> yes because it, it looks like i mean it's kind of a deal where you set it and and it will it will fall asleep and it'll keep tracking and so yeah that's a really cool feature and it'll well it, it'll do this across the room i assume it will, and there's a feature that's coming that that's coming down the road um, that we're working on um, that actually triggers HTTP commands as well as hex commands over the network uh, to trigger macros. So the so the TriCaster uses macros where you can set up additional buttons that the TriCaster and VMix also has um, that you normally you could set it up to where you slide the person over by pressing a button and the screen comes down because it's recording a macro. Well, with this camera, you can set up zones, if you will. And um, again, this is still in beta. So if you want to see it, 
I can show it to you where it will actually trigger um, a really cool effect that I have, and I can kind of talk you through it as it does it um, when I go to the when I go to the camera. Um, so I'm just going to put up my generic lower third here, just to kind of show you as a, as a demonstration. Mm -hmm. So basically, I've I've made a hot spot um, in front of my rack. So when I walk over in front of my my rack here, as it brings it over, I'm going to stand here for a little bit, and I have it set on a timer. The lower third drops. Meanwhile, my hands are here. I haven't done anything. What well, you're going to watch? My video outro is going to roll here in just a few seconds. It comes in, and then after my video outro, it fades to black, and then it also mutes the audio so that way it plays the video. Fades to black, and that's it. And then I can come back in, and uh, I'm back in my seat. Wow. It's impressive. And True that's magic. all using commands. Well, it's, it's using HTTP commands and hex commands the same way you would use a, are you guys familiar with like a stream deck to control different uh, pieces of software? I'm not, no. I've heard of it, but I've never experienced it. Okay. Um, Elgato makes a stream deck and basically you can set it up if you want a physical controller to control um, Wirecast, vMix, OBS, even TriCaster. And so the same protocol that it uses in essence over the network um, you can do that with this with this camera. So I essentially basically set up a, a, a real high end workflow, if you will, for somebody like myself who doesn't have a producer. So for me to get up and walk to the camera to kind of get intimate with my audience and say, OK, we'll see you guys next week. I can time it perfectly with that macro to know, OK, after three seconds, the lower third is going to drop. And then five seconds later, the video is going to roll in and I can say, hey, make sure you hit that subscribe button, all that good stuff rolls my outro, mutes my audio, so I can go get ready to just turn off the recording. I could even set it to do that if I want. And then it goes to black. Real professional. And you could do this at a church as well. Wow. wow. Very wow. cool. That's, we're, we're starstruck here, Stephen. Uh, this is probably the most entertaining <laughs> podcast we've done uh, because of all the camera work and stuff that you're doing here. Plus, you look like you're on the Enterprise uh, as well. That's pretty amazing. Well, Phil, uh, Phil said this was a big deal. He said, so he said, you know, bring my A game. So that's, that's what right. I said. Uh, we're, a, we're, a, we're a big deal. That's right. Yeah. That's we're, what he said. we're, we're yeah. kind of a big deal. So we think. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. So I'm kind of overwhelmed here. Uh, so, uh, so, so let's, let me recap a little bit. The, all right. This is, you yeah. called this the Hubble. H Hubble what was it called? H Huddle, like uh, like you're on a football team, Huddle. Okay, Huddle, huddle okay. Cam H so if you go to HuddleCamHD.com, I'll see if I can even pull that up here. Now, this is a $3,000 camera. I'm not going to I'm not gonna um, sugarcoat that, if you will. Um, it is it is a, a pricier camera, but um, HuddleCam is a sister company of PTC Optics under the Haverford brand but there's the 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 ptc optics that's the huddle cam that's what it looks like that's the one that was tracking me there's a little camera right here in the in the front if you can uh see it here i'll zoom in of course it changed on me on the website um but let me see if i can go back in the front of it you can see in the bottom left there's a camera yeah. that's the camera that watches you and tracks you while the other camera above is is the one that's actually giving you the footage and they make the Huddle Cam HD, which I also have in the studio here as well. It looks like a giant webcam. But um, you can see that's the size of a, a PTZ camera. They're not, they're not very large. If I had to measure them, yeah. they're probably like six inches high by maybe four inches wide, five inches maybe. All right. Yeah. Very nice. So, very nice. Um, so as churches want to move to a PTZ, is it, uh, well, one of the other questions was the um, controlling area, I can set that, I assume an infinite or not, or nearly infinite amount of distance from where the camera is. So I can set my controls up either in the back of the sound booth or over in the children's area or wherever, right? As long as I have, a, I can run the cables. Is that the only limitation? So that's the best part. 
you know, years ago when I first started using these cameras, I think I've been using these cameras for six or seven years. Um, years ago, you had to use what what was called RS-232 cables, which essentially look like like this. For those that are listening, it looks like a VGA on one end, and then it looks like an S-video on the other end. And the S-video part, we'll just call it that's for the for the listeners, um, would go into the back of the camera, and the VGA part would go to another cable that had a VGA part with a USB on the end that you would connect to your computer. Well, as, as you were stating, you'd have to be in so many feet of your switching computer in order to use the pan, tilt, zoom features within that software or hardware device. Now you have the capabilities because of NDI. I essentially have a camera that's sitting um, almost uh, 50 feet away from me right now that I can control right here over NDI through the network. So these cameras all have uh, power over ethernet or PoE. And so you essentially just hook a network cable up to it, run a network cable to your network switch. So let's say you set the camera up within 10 feet of your network switch, boom, you could be 100, 150 feet away pulling that signal into your favorite software or hardware mm -hmm. and be able to control it and have minimal latency um, a lot of the cameras that you have seen on the website are NDI capable, and even you could go old school, Phil, like this one. You could go old school with SDI. You could do HDMI. Um, all the cameras are mostly provisioned with that, um, and you could still do RS-232 if you really want to stick with that uh, protocol, but because of NDI, it's made uh, the world of broadcasting churches, schools, even your home broadcasting so much simpler just by doing power over ethernet and connecting to a, a network. All right. So um, you mentioned the term NDI. You want to give a brief explanation of what, what is NDI and how do I get it? Oh. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So with NDI, it, it, it is a feature that allows you to bring in network video. So NDI stands for Network Device Interface. And it basically allows, it searches your network to find NDI sources or network cameras, captures. And, you know, the best thing that I could possibly do is, since a lot of guys are familiar with, uh, with Wirecast, I can kind of pull up the Wirecast interface here. As you can see, there's the TriCaster interface in there. Um, but if I just click the plus button here and go under network, you can see a list of all these NDI sources that are on my network that I can choose as live video. So I have a um, I have a, a shot with you guys on it on my Mac Mini, which is across the studio. So I'm going to click there. You are. It pulls you right in audio and video over Zoom, and uh, it brings it in. So I can switch between my TriCaster interface. I was doing some tutorials earlier, or switch to to you inside of there. So there's a lot of versatility and it works the same way with OBS, vMix. Um, it works on the TriCaster the same way. It comes up with a list. Uh, there's, there's a lot of great options for NDI and you don't really have to configure anything. It just, it just sees it on the network. So for the average churches, what um, I assume things are moving towards NDI. NDI has been around for what, five or six years or so, I think. And or is it, um, did it overtake the industry by storm or are people still migrating to it? What's the penetration of NDI within the church world right now? Well, I mean, I can't speak for every church out there, but I know a lot of the churches, um, you guys are familiar with uh, Renewed Vision, ProPresenter, Easy Worship, those types mm -hmm. of uh, softwares that allow you to put your words and scriptures up on the screen. They've all migrated to NDI, and if you remember, that was a big issue for churches, getting the, the song lyrics and, and scripture to overlay on, on the video of uh, the live stream, and people were doing massive workarounds. I remember doing massive workarounds. Well, now you have that capability with NDI, so I think a lot, even the smaller churches are starting to adopt it more, in my opinion, because they don't have that infrastructure. Um, a lot of them were forced into live streaming because of the pandemic. And so, in, in my opinion, and from what I've seen, 
it seems like the smaller churches and the medium-sized churches are the ones that are adopting NDI more because they can do more with less volunteers and spending, you know, the least amount of money because a lot of things are NDI capable at this moment in time. I, I guess the limitation would be the network itself, though, right? Because if you don't have a very yeah. strong network, it's going to fail on you. Well, you know, I'm I don't I'm just using a residential network here. I mean, mine's not something, you know, enter enterprise or anything like that. The main thing is um, to to make sure that you have the proper ports open that uh, New Tech suggests. And and the reason I say that is because most people will have it open. If you have a really locked down environment, like let's say your church has an overzealous IT guy and he locks down every port known to man, he's going to have to open a few ports to make NDI a little bit more seamless. Um, I like to isolate my network a little bit. So I have network switches that just run my broadcasting gear. And then on the other side of the studio, I have an actual arcade that um, I also collect video game consoles as part of what I do on the side. Um, so they all run over the internet. So I isolate the network to ensure that I get the maximum throughput for my NDI devices. And, and I, I would say that to get the, the maximum benefit of NDI, you definitely want to check out NDI.tv and read up to make sure that your network is essentially um, set up the way it should be to handle you know, the load. But the, but the nice part is with NDI HX and soon to be HX2, there's a lot of compression involved that churches don't really have to worry about. They can get that compressed video going over the network without bottlenecking their network that maybe you know the average video file is going to go ooh that's compressed most people aren't going to notice it right so another question steve froze up there on us a little bit there yeah frozen steve yeah. He's frozen. He's frozen. There we go. Frozen. We'll have to wait. You, you oh, froze. Your, your internet broke. So, uh, Steve, uh, yes. go ahead and repeat the question, but make it quick because we only got about another minute or two left. Okay. Um, I'm a church and I want to make the switch to PTZ, but I just bought a bunch of cameras or I bought some cameras. I know there's um, options for making a getting a mount that's a pan tilt zoom mount that i can hook up to my camera what's the pros and cons of going that route as opposed to just buying a pt a camera dedicated for ptz or a ptz camera that's a really good question I, in fact i was one that kind of looked that direction as well i think the interfacing with a lot of your your softwares is going to be your 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 bottleneck if you will I think if you're just using it um, with a hardware controller, let's say a, a joystick that they sell with that particular mount, um, I think that's the only way you're really going to be able to control it. Um, because I, I mean, unless they've come out with some different ones, I haven't played with one in probably probably six or seven years. So I'm sure technology has changed. But a lot of these companies partner together with different companies like PTZ Optics and, and other companies that make similar cameras like Sony in that um, to where they integrate directly with the software or hardware. So it makes things a lot easier for the end user. Yeah, the cost is there, but the beauty of the PTZ cameras is maybe you're running three or four cameras right now. But you don't necessarily need them if you set up presets with one camera. You can get away with one or two cameras as opposed to doing four or five static cameras, if you if you know what I mean. Okay, good deal. Hey, look, we're out of time here, but we need to have you on again because we just, you know, you've you've entertained us. And uh, the <laughs> next time we have you on, you're going to have to up your game a little more, too. But uh, this was really good. Uh, so Stephen Haywood's been our guest today and uh, PTZ Optics. Dot com is that correct? PTZoptics.com. Yes, you, you are you still doing the tech buzz? I am still doing the tech buzz. Yeah. So people can go to what the tech buzz dot net. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. And uh, are you? What are you doing with that? Are you? Are you still doing uh, tech? <laughs> so, <laughs> no. Um, I've actually I've actually switched over to doing um, a lot of more retro gaming and uh, I'll just entertain you guys some more. So I have a, 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 the other side of the studio is filled with <laughs> retro arcade and games wow. and consoles and things from when 
you and I and, and some of the other people were kids. I mean, I've got a Atari 2600 and <laughs> in, 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 uh, in television behind me, complete in box. Uh. And so we do shows about the retro gaming and retro game community and talk to some of the original developers of those particular systems. And so uh, even new stuff, you know, affordable home arcades now and pinball machines and things that I can introduce my kids to. So, wow. um, yeah, yeah, so that's what we do on that. Yeah, my son would like that. All right, guys. Well, look, we're out of time. And Stephen, thank you so much for uh, entertaining us today and actually giving us some really good information on PTZ cameras. Absolutely. My pleasure. All right. Well, we'll have you on again if we didn't scare you off. And uh, so we're <laughs> we're uh, we're done here, folks. If you want to get a hold of Stephen, uh, you know, you can go to ptzoptics.com uh, or you can just send us an email support at streamingchurch.tv. We'll uh, forward any questions or any anything at all to Stephen. And uh, for since we're out of time here, for Michael Gray, Steve Lacey, I'm Phil Thompson. Have yourself a great day. Thanks for listening to the Church Solutions Podcast. We will catch you again next time. Take care.